The HAL Tejas MK-2, also referred to as the medium weight fighter MWF marks a significant evolution in India's indigenous combat aircraft program. Built upon the foundations laid by the original Tejas MK-1 and MK-1A, the Tejas MK-2 is not merely an upgrade, it's a leap forward, designed to meet the Indian Air Force's requirements for a powerful, versatile, and future-ready multirole fighter. With a larger airframe, improved avionics, increased payload capacity, and a more powerful engine, the MK-2 promises to bridge the capability gap between lightweight fighters and the heavier fourth-generation aircraft currently in service. The most noticeable change with the Tejas MK-2 is its larger, more robust airframe. Compared to the MK-1 and MK-1A, the MK-2 features a longer fuselage, an expanded wingspan, and enlarged air intakes, all contributing to greater internal fuel capacity and improved aerodynamics. The aircraft's weight class has moved from a light combat aircraft LCA to a medium weight fighter, allowing it to carry more weapons and fuel, increasing its operational range and versatility. The maximum takeoff weight has risen to approximately 17.5 tons, nearly 5 tons more than its predecessor, which directly correlates with its increased combat load and endurance. Under the hood, the Tejas MK-2 gets a substantial power boost with the General Electric F414 GINS-6 turbofan engine. This engine produces about 98 kilonewtons of thrust, a significant increase over the 84 kilonewtons output from the F404 engine used in earlier variants. With this new engine, the Tejas MK-2 gains higher thrust-to-weight ratio, enabling better acceleration, higher top speeds, and improved maneuverability. The enhanced powerplant also supports operations from shorter runways and gives the fighter better high-altitude performance, crucial for operations in mountainous terrain like the Himalayas. Avionics and cockpit systems on the MK-2 are another area of major advancement. The aircraft features a larger, panoramic multi-function display MFD, in the cockpit that consolidates information intuitively for the pilot. A wide-area touchscreen display is flanked by a modern head-up display HUD, and is supported by voice command capability, reducing pilot workload in high-stress scenarios. Fly-by-wire systems have been upgraded for better flight control responsiveness, and the inclusion of advanced artificial intelligence routines helps with data fusion and threat assessment in real-time. The open architecture of the avionics system also means that upgrades and integration of new tech over the aircraft's lifespan will be much easier and faster. The Tejas MK-2 is equipped with an active electronically scanned array AESA radar, most likely the indigenous UTOM radar system, though there are also provisions for foreign AESA units like those from Elta or Thales depending on operational requirements. AESA radars provide superior detection range, better target tracking, and higher resistance to jamming than older mechanically scanned arrays. Complementing the radar are advanced electronic warfare EU, suites that include self-protection jammers, radar warning receivers RWR, and countermeasure dispensing systems, significantly improving the aircraft's survivability in contested airspace. Another defining characteristic of the Tejas MK-2 is its versatile weapon loadout capability. With 11 hardpoints, up from the 8 found on the MK-1A, the aircraft can carry a wide array of air-to-air -air missiles, air-to-ground precision guided munitions, bombs, and electronic pods. This includes integration with beyond visual range missiles like the Astra, as well as imported weapons such as the Derby and Python 5 from Rafael. The aircraft is also expected to be compatible with the Scalp and Crystal Maze crews. Missiles, enhancing its deep strike capabilities. Furthermore, the MK-2 is planned to integrate with standoff weapons, glide bombs, and next-generation indigenous missiles currently under development, ensuring the platform remains relevant for decades to come. One of the unique selling points of the Tejas MK-2 lies in its multirole flexibility. While designed as a fighter, it's equally adept in strike missions, reconnaissance, and even maritime operations. Its design incorporates provisions for conformal fuel tanks to further increase range without occupying hardpoints, and an in-flight refueling probe ensures extended endurance during long-range missions. These features, combined with advanced navigation and targeting systems, make the Tejas MK-2 suitable for a variety of mission profiles, from defending Indian airspace to offensive strikes deep into enemy territory. Design enhancements don't just improve performance, they also boost stealth and survivability. 
The Tejas MK2 incorporates radar absorbing materials in its construction and features reduced radar cross section through shaping and internal design adjustments. While not a full stealth aircraft, it's built with low observable characteristics in mind, helping it evade enemy detection to some extent. The airframe has also been optimized for maintenance, with easily accessible modules and systems that reduce turnaround time and improve mission readiness, an important factor for frontline combat operations. From a strategic perspective, the Tejas MK2 plays a crucial role in India's push for self-reliance in defense manufacturing. Developed by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, HAL, with significant input from the Aeronautical Development Agency, ADA, the MK2 program is a cornerstone of the Atmanirbar Bharat initiative. It represents a maturing of India's aerospace industry and an ability to deliver sophisticated defense platforms with minimal foreign dependence. This is not only a point of national pride but also an economic and logistical advantage, as it ensures secure supply chains and lower long-term operational costs compared to entirely imported aircraft. Another important advantage of the Tejas MK2 is its modular design and future upgradability. The aircraft has been engineered with scalability in mind. Future iterations can be upgraded with newer radar systems, enhanced electronic warfare packages, or next-generation weapons with minimal airframe changes. This design philosophy ensures that the Tejas MK2 will not become obsolete quickly, and can adapt to rapidly evolving combat environments. Additionally, the aircraft is built with network-centric warfare in mind, featuring secure data links, sensor fusion, and compatibility with the Indian Air Force's digital battle management systems. Operationally, the Tejas MK2 is expected to replace several older aircraft in the IAF's inventory, including the Mirage 2000, Jaguar, and MiG-29 fleets. These aging platforms are becoming increasingly expensive to maintain and are outpaced by newer threats in the region. The MK2 offers a cost-effective, high-performance alternative that can carry out similar or superior missions. With the planned induction of over 100 units, the Tejas MK2 will form a major part of India's air defense grid in the next two decades. Its production is likely to be streamlined at HAL's new dedicated assembly lines, ensuring quicker delivery rates and supporting export ambitions. On the global stage, the Tejas MK2 could also serve as a compelling export platform. With its advanced capabilities, competitive pricing, and absence of export restrictions typically associated with Western platforms, the MK2 could appeal to countries looking to modernize their air forces without becoming dependent on U.S., Russian, or Chinese technology. Its performance characteristics position it somewhere between 4th and 4.5 generation fighters, making it a strong contender in markets that require multirole capability but can't afford the high price tags of F-35s or Eurofighters. Despite its promise, the Tejas MK2 faces certain challenges that must be acknowledged. The development timeline has already seen delays, and although the prototype is expected to fly by late 2025, Full-scale production and squadron-level induction may take until the end of the decade. HAL and ADA will need to work closely to meet deadlines, address integration issues swiftly, and ensure that quality standards are met at every level. Additionally, the aircraft must undergo rigorous testing in various operational conditions, desert, high altitude, maritime, to validate its performance across India's diverse terrain and climates. Nevertheless, the overall outlook for the Tejas MK2 is extremely positive. It represents a culmination of decades of learning, refinement, and ambition in Indian aerospace design. It is not just a more capable fighter, but a strategic asset that can enhance India's air superiority, strike capability, and defense exports. With its powerful engine, versatile weapon systems, cutting-edge avionics, and indigenous design, the MK2 isn't just about replacing older jets, it's about redefining the way India approaches aerial combat for the next 30 years. The Tejas MK2's significance goes beyond its technical specifications. It symbolizes India's resolve to master high-end defense technology, reduce foreign dependency, and emerge as a serious player in the global aerospace market. Whether it's flying over the icy borders of Ladakh or supporting naval operations in the Indian Ocean, the MK2 is poised to become a workhorse and a guardian in equal measure. For a nation seeking to bolster its strategic autonomy while ensuring its skies remain secure, the HAL Tejas MK2 is not just a fighter, it's a statement of capability and intent.